It's already been eight days since I entered the Republic of Rwanda. So far, I drove from the Rusumo border post to beautiful Kayonza before heading to the capital Kigali, where I'm spending a few days resting. From Kigali, the plan is to drive west to the town of Kibuye, by the Lake Kivu. The border officer only gave 14 days to Rafiki, my Toyota Hilux. So let's see if I can extend the stay a little bit longer. This is how I spent my time in Kigali. Last night was the worst one. I couldn't sleep at all. I had an unbearable burning sensation in my stomach and spreading on my back. I tried to lay down on the floor, but it didn't go away. I was very worried until I fell asleep of exhaustion. I enjoyed these few days to rest and I feel so much better. Um, even when I arrived in the hotel, uh, I look at me and I was like, I don't recognize me. Even the people in the hotel, they were like, I could see, uh, I could see they were like a bit worried for me. And every day they were like, oh, you look a little bit better than yesterday, a little bit better. And, and today they were like, oh yeah, I think you're ready maybe to go. <laughs> so nice. Actually, yeah, this is the problematic of the travel, right? I want to see many, like many countries in Africa. But, you know, like I have just one body, I'm like, okay, I should slow down. But if I slow down a lot, uh, you know, like I won't have money to see other countries. So that's the problematic, you know, like most of the people who do that, they're like two people, they're couples or like, or families. I just need to, I don't know, to think better. <laughs> I don't know, but I know that I need to listen to my body. I actually listen to my body a lot, but you know, I have this passion for, you know, Africa and driving and I, so I'm always in the go, you know, on the go and, uh, and, and I don't really think about me sometimes. And now I'm like, yeah, I should think about me more um, because, you know, I'm alone in, the, in this thing and uh, yeah, it's, but yesterday, I actually wanted to go and um, in and to take the road, and then I was like, I don't feel ready. I mean, my head is ready, my head is always ready, my heart is always ready, but like my body was not ready. I was still like, you know, tired and not feeling great, and my stomach was painful and stuff. And then I was like, yeah, I should stay a little bit more and just to wait for my body to feel um, one hundred percent better. That's how I feel today and um, hopefully, hopefully it's going to last.
The majority of Rwanda's population is Christian. About 45% belong to the Catholic Church and 35% to the Protestant faith. And because of the controversial role of the Catholic Church during the genocide, the Church is often criticized. Only 5% profess Islam. However, Islam has gained in prestige since 1994 because of the exemplary solidarity of the Islamic community during the genocide. Today is very very hilly. I go up, I go down, I go up again and down. <laughs> it's not the easiest road because it's full of potholes, um, and yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not very easy, but it's very scenic. It's beautiful, beautiful. The mountains, it's like. I, I, I can't, I don't even know how to describe what I see today. It's, um, it's very breathtaking. It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs>
Ronda is definitely not made for camping. So yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm at Lake Kivu now and I'm just um, driving around to find spots, but there is nothing, it's very hilly, so it's not very, it's not the best for the rooftop tent. Uh, I asked some motels and hotels, they don't accept me to camp, which I can understand. So, <laughs> which I can understand. So yeah, so um, anyway, um, it's uh, annoying, but... I have a baguette! <laughs> I can't wait to be in Uganda because in Uganda apparently oops, there are more campsite spots and stuff and they're very camping friendly and um, and yeah I think it's going to be easier for me because now it's so I'm like wasting like an hour roaming around for like to find where I can sleep and um, it's uh, also you can't access wide spaces you know wide area because it's um, you have many cliffs and stuff and um, it's, it's not easy I finally found a place to spend the night. It's an old monastery converted into a hotel, and the price is okay. This is the view from my room. The atmosphere here is incredibly peaceful over one of the African Great Lakes. This is my bedroom for tonight. And this is the bathroom. Everything I need. Lake Kivu is the largest local source of fish in Rwanda, providing more than 20,000 tons of fish per year. And for the first time since I traveled Africa, there is no dangerous animals like hippos or crocodiles. But Lake Kivu is also called Killer Lake because of the risk of deadly eruption. It actually contains combustible carbon dioxide and methane that threatens countless communities. I had a good night of sleep, um, but a bit warm. It's a very, very old building and so it's not very well isolated, so it was very warm. But the view is so beautiful. I feel very, very frustrated without Rafiki. <laughs> um, I really, I think I'm going to make my way to Uganda. I'm going to uh, apply for the e-visa today. Yeah, and it's very, very expensive. Uh, I really can't afford that. Um, it's literally ruining my, <laughs> my budget. So um, I need to make my way to Uganda, otherwise I won't be able to do many countries or just to stay for as long as I want to stay. <laughs> Last but not least, there are some riots at the moment um, nearby the lake where I am. It's a very big lake though, but on the north part of the lake between Congo uh, especially the city of Goma and uh, and the north east uh, the, the northwest part of Rwanda. Apparently, it's pretty bad. And the thing is, like to to go to head to Rwanda uh, to Uganda, there is a, a road coming passing nearby. So I'm like a bit stressed because um, those riots they're also against. Um, I don't know if it's Europe or France, but. French people are not very welcomed in some countries here in Africa. And yeah, I don't want to risk my life because Arafiki is a French registration car. So yeah, it's adding something else. <laughs> So I just came here to renew my um, 
my visa for Rafiki, my permit, and they can't do it. They can't renew, so I have to go to a border and I think I'm going to exi exit Rwanda. It's too complicated. The custom office, when I crossed the border from Tanzania to Rwanda, they gave me 14 days for my car, for Rafiki. So um, on the 13th day, you have to renew uh, the entry card. And the thing is like, you can only renew at a border. So they told me like the, I, I, that I could renew here in this building, which is a authority, like revenue authority building. And they also deal for some uh, problem for foreigners and stuff, but they couldn't do it. They told me to go to a, a border. But the thing is like the borders with Congo are not very safe. Um, there are some riots at the northern border uh, where they told me to go, so I won't go because, um, you know, I have a French car. It can be, like, dangerous for me. So I actually am going to leave Rwanda. Um, yeah, I think it's better. Oh, someone's coming. <laughs> I thus drove back to the hotel to do some laundry and to get ready for the next border crossing. My heart is heavy and feeling a bit frustrated because I would have loved to stay longer in beautiful and unique Rwanda.